I made this entire backdrop with bulletin board paper, spray paint, foam core, and a for sale sign. How did I do it? Let's check it out. This video is brought to you with support from Trains.com. Trains.com is a fantastic source for new and used model trains and accessories. I have bought plenty of things from Trains.com and have always been satisfied. Their wide selection and easy to use website makes finding the train you need a breeze. They're great for finding things like old Atherton Blue Box, Vintage Lionel, plus a wide selection in all the major scales. And if you're looking to downsize or sell an entire collection, Trains will buy your entire collection. As a special offer to my subscribers, you can use the promo code JIMMYDIY to get $10 off your order of $50 or more. You can check them out at the link in the description. A lot of my projects are done not only to show you how to do it, but so that they are easy to replicate. Not everyone has the same skills, so taking that out of the equation as much as possible means more people can get the results they are happy with. And this project is a prime example of that. So let's get started on this backdrop. To start, we'll need to put together the foam core backing and get it to the right size. To begin with, we need two sections of foam core because the space it has to go in is longer than any single piece of it. We slide them into position and mark where to cut one of them so that it can fit in its space. The gap between the two sides is plenty wide enough for this foam core. Once these are cut, I can lay them out in place a wide piece of tape to hold them together like masking tape. I would advise a lighter color than what I use with this painter's tape. It worked well, but there was a little bit of show through once I put the bulletin board paper on, so if you can, use lighter colored tape. Now that we have the backing done, we can put on our paper. Now I'm using non-glossy bulletin board paper, and that's important. I roll the paper over it. This is where we run into our first wrinkle in this project, and that pun was intended. We're gonna glue the paper to the foam core. To do that, we're going to use spray adhesive. This helps avoid visible globs of glue underneath the paper. I cut out exactly what I need. This worked perfectly. Well, almost. You will have to work to get as many wrinkles out as you can. Once that is dried, we can test fit it again. All right, we have a board constructed. Now it's time to paint it. This is where the spray paint and the for sale sign come in. I need to make clouds. Clouds can be difficult, but I've got a pretty simple way that makes it a whole lot easier. We start with a styrene for sale sign. We then draw a cloud shape coming out of the edges. Once we've done that, we use some scissors to cut out the cloud shape. Now, don't focus too hard on staying on your lines, but rather focus on smooth turns for the puffy parts of the clouds. I do one on each side of the sign so that I can mix them around and do a little bit of variety. Once this is done, I bring the sign and some flat white spray paint to the backdrop. I lay the backdrop down and do quick bursts of paint with these stencils. And these bursts are done about four to six inches off of the backdrop. And I do them left to right, right to left. Working my way down the cloud stencil, I don't go all the way to the bottom of the edge of where I cut it, but rather stop about three quarters of the way. This will give us that faded cloud bottom look. And you always wanna aim a little bit up and away from that edge so that you don't get any of that hard edge. But if you do get some of the hard edge, you can just do a, another part of the stencil and just put it over there and it'll just make another part of the cloud. One thing I would recommend is get some of the scrap piece of bulletin board paper and do a little bit of practice on this before you do it on your backdrop for real. It helped me out and it'll definitely help you out.
Once I've got the clouds done, I test fit it to see how it looks. Next, it's time for some hillsides, and I've done the same thing for the hillsides by cutting a stencil out of a styrene for sale sign. I start with the back hills because they are a different color. You want them to be a little bit lighter of a color than what you're gonna have for the hills that are closer to your foreground. This will just give the atmospheric look of as something gets further away, it gets a little bit more faded. Once that is done, I switch to the darker color for closer hill. I'm gonna pause right here because I did a little bit of an oopsie. I didn't let the back hill dry all the way before starting on the front hill, and that led to a little bit of splotching that I had to cover up with some more of the white spray paint and a technique. So if you do this, definitely make sure you let that back hill completely dry. Otherwise, you're gonna get some splotchiness on the back side of your stencil that's gonna spot. I do a little bit of tweaking and spot treatment to make sure I didn't mess anything up. And here you go. Is it the single most detailed and amazing photorealistic backdrop you've ever seen? No, but it's something that looks a lot better than what a lot of people can do just purely with a paintbrush and hoping for the best. Hopefully this process it takes a lot of the challenge out of doing a backgrounds and can give you something that you really like as your backdrop for your model railroad. Backgrounds do not have to be a challenge. All you need are the right tools and materials, and you can make a solid backdrop for your layout. Check out some of these model railroad businesses. Model Railway Backshop is a great place if you're looking for a quality paint job for your old or new brass model locomotive. If you're looking to get that brass model weather, you can get that done too. Right now, you can get 10% off any brass model painting and weathering job by using the promo code NMRA10. Check them out at modelrailwaybackshop.com. Scaletree.com. Scaletree.com makes hero and forest trees for HO and N scale. They also do custom trees for custom orders. Check them out at scaletree.com. Now, I've actually done a few model railroad backdrop videos in the past, and you can check them all right here. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, and happy railroading.